Hey, this is Eric Waite, and I thought I'd share with you my art bag collection. Um, I've been into wine for over 20 years, got into whiskey about three and a half years ago. I studied enology, winemaking. Um, I'm a certified sommelier with the Court of Mass Sommeliers, French wine scholar at the Wine Scholar Guild, I have a diploma from the Wine Spur Educational Trust, um, traveled all over California, Oregon, Virginia, uh, France, uh, visiting wine uh, regions and distilleries and chateaus and so forth. And then about three and a half years ago, got into whiskey while studying for one of the units in the WSET diploma, uh, which was on spirits, which introduced me to the Macallan 12. And next thing you know, I was off traveling on the road, visiting distilleries. I've been to 40 distilleries in Scotland, including Ardbeg. Hello, I'm Eric Wait, and I'm at Ardbeg Distillery in Isla, Scotland. Come join me. Isla is absolutely superb. If you haven't been there, it's a must go to place if you can. I've been to thus far six in Kentucky. I'm hoping to go to another dozen or so later this year if travel resumes. I've been to about a dozen in Texas. I'm hoping to resume my travels around Texas visiting more distilleries. But uh, so uh, let's get into Ardbeg. I do not know exactly why I have such a fondness for Ardbeg. Besides, obviously, the aromas and the flavors, but it's more than that. Some people have their favorite football team. Some people have their favorite musical band. I have my favorite distillery. All right. So for me, uh, Ardbeg 10 uh, was actually the first full bottle that I ever bought. I started off my whiskey journey by I bought 104 minis that I had shipped over from the UK because they're not available here, a lot of them aren't available here in the United States, but then graduated to, to, to the uh, larger bottles. And I originally was using my YouTube channel to study for exams. Now I just do it to continue to study uh, whiskey and I have another wine channel. Um, and to uh, become part of a larger community of whiskey tubers, I'm sort of uh, friends with a lot of people around the world who are also whiskey tubers and it's, it's an awesome thing. All right, let's get into Artbank. So Ardbeg 10 was my first, I have the Ardbeg 10 right here. This, I'm sure everybody's familiar with this, what this is. Um, originally this was not available here in the United States. It was available in the UK, Europe, and Canada. And so I actually got this shipped into the United States and now you can get this in the United States, which is really, really, really cool. Every time I see it, it reminds me of my visit to the distillery. And uh, of course, I don't recommend you know, the bottle comes in like this. Don't recommend keeping it like that. Take the bottle out and then turn it sideways and put it on your shelf somewhere. And a little tag just fell out. Uh, I have two bottles right behind it, but I'll get into that in just a second. I haven't actually tasted those yet. Uh, the Oogadol, uh, the Oogadol, which I like, but it's not necessarily my favorite. Uh, the Anoa, for me, the Anoa, it's a little sweeter, a little bit softer on the peat. Uh, a little bit more fruity. It's one that I recommend for people who want to get, perhaps uh, get introduced to Isla, uh, perhaps get introduced to Ardbeg. Um, I, I like it. To me, it's a little bit more desserty, a little more after dinner kind of a thing, but all right, well, you're in the mood for it. The Ardbeg 10, I've actually gone through three bottles of that. I, out of all the Ardbegs, I've gone through more uh, of those uh, than any other. In my personal opinion, I think it's the highest quality price ratio Scotch whiskey, period. Um, it's, it's still been maintaining a value. I'm still seeing it anywhere between $46 and $55 here in the United States. Despite the tariffs, I've not seen it jacked up. And of course, around the holidays, you can find all kinds of different gift packs. So it's, it's an awesome gift giver as well. Uh, another reason why I love Ardbeg is they've not gone Absolutely crazy, like some other distilleries and jack other prices, but I won't get into that. Uh, the Cory Vrecken, my favorite in terms of higher ABV whiskeys. I think it's got the highest quality price ratio for a high ABV whiskey. Um, and the Kelpie, which I like, I like, but it's not necessarily my favorite. I sometimes want to add another Ardbeg to it to balance some other characters out. Uh, this is the Ardbeg Grooves. This is not the uh, committee release version. I like it. It's got a little more red fruit, so that uh, chocolate covered cherry note to it. I like it. I've got two of these. So there's another one behind that. Uh, this is the Ardbeg uh, Trayvon, 19 year old. 
I really, really like it. it. To me, it seems like an Ardbeg 10 with more finesse, a little more age, a little more maturity. I like it, but the quality price ratio isn't there. Uh, but still, I think it's an absolutely fantastic whiskey. This is the, oh, Supernova. This is the 2020 uh, Supernova. I uh, really, really, really like it. For me, I get this character on the back of the throat, that super charry character on the back of the throat. And what I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely love, take 50% of the uh, uh, Ardbeg Supernova and put in 50% of the Cory Vrecken. I think the Cory Vrecken, you're still maintaining a higher ABV and it sort of counterbalances some of that uh, throat character of the smoke uh, and uh, brings a little, actually a little savory note that I really, really, really like. So, uh, a favorite dram for me. In fact, I did a video called The Ultimate Dram. It's actually a silent black and white video in which I just use facial expressions uh, and some sound effects to convey my perception of that combination. Again, 50% Supernova and 50% uh, Corey Vrecken. Uh, the Ardbeg Kildalton. If you're not familiar with the Kildalton, Kildalton is... Uh, the sort of little peninsula there on the end, uh, the south end of Isla, uh, where you know, Ardbeg is located, and really, really close by is uh, the, the Kildalton Parish. Uh, it's, it's a ruin. It doesn't have a roof on it, and there are very, very, very old uh, tombs there, or graves there, and one of the most pristine and old uh, Kildalton, uh, excuse me, uh, Celtic crosses, uh, I think it's dated around, five, if I recall correctly, about 560 AD. Absolutely amazing um, for hi history buffs. So the east and west side of the church, of the Christian church split in 1054 AD. So the, the Greek speaking side from the Latin spe speaking side of the church split in 1054 AD. So this that cross re reflects a thousand years before Christianity was split. Of course, five years, 100 years after that, there was another one with the Protestant uh, Reformation or Revolt, how you want to call it. Anyway, not to talk about religion here, but historically in its context, when, when you look at that cross, you realize what it sort of represents. But it's really, really, really cool. Uh, the Ardman Galileo, I haven't reviewed this yet. I've done an uncorking of it. I'll be doing an uh, Isla Marathon. At the time of recording this, I'm just finishing up a Texas Whiskey Marathon, which has been going on for three months. I'll be doing a two-month Isla Whiskey Marathon, and I'll review this. This is the Galileo uh, 1999. I've only done a, a, a neck pour, but just from the neck pour, I think it's absolutely superb. The Ardbeg Drum, I've got two of these. This is the committee release. Um, I actually was able to get six of them, six of them. Uh, I am not a whiskey flipper. I, I don't buy and then turn around and sell to try to make a profit. If someone had something they wanted to trade me, I might trade something, but other than that, I'm not a flipper. What I did was, uh, when I got six of these Ardbeg Drum Committee releases, I contacted other fellow whiskey tubers, friends uh, in Kansas and in Ohio and in Canada and other places, say, hey, do you want one? I'll get you one so you can review it on your channel. If you, if, if you buy anything, you flip it and you want to sell it, make a profit, make money, and that's fine, and it helps. I, I don't, uh, that, that's fine. I don't have an ethical, moral problem with that. It's just I prefer to use it as an opportunity to help someone out, a uh, fellow uh, whiskey lover, a fellow whiskey tuber. So I still have about two, uh, one for later, one to now. This was about halfway through this. In my opinion, it's a, it's a great whiskey, but really needs to get past the shoulders. Initial impressions were kind of, I thought it was a little odd. I knew it would be controversial. I knew there would be a lot of people who wouldn't necessarily like it. And, and, and sure enough, my fellow whiskey tubers were all over the map in terms of their perceptions of and how they rated it. Some, some of them, I think, uh, scored it too early. They didn't really spend enough time with it. But it's definitely out there. One of the things I like about Ardbeg is their experimentation and the different um, expressions that they come up, not only in terms of their core range, but the, their yearlies as well, the unique yearlies. Uh, this is the Ardbeg Dark Cove. Uh, this is probably one of my greatest bottles, greatest whiskey achievements. I have two of these, well, one and a half now, because this one's about halfway empty. I, I was able to get two of these for 150 bucks each. And at the time, I, if, I could have bought more. And now I regret that I didn't, uh, because this thus far is like my favorite Ardbeg of all time. But a close runner-up is a 50-50 blend of the Supernova and the Corey Vrecken. Just saying. Uh, Ardbeg Perpetuum. Uh, 
the 2015, uh, 2015 200th anniversary of Ardbeg. To me, I consider this the Ardbeg Perpetuum to be the um, Lefroy Glover's Ardbeg. Much more ashy, much more of that character. I, another one that takes time, getting, you gotta get past the shoulder uh, to really appreciate it. It's still widely available and really affordable. I don't think it has high demand. I, I don't think it appeals to a lot of Ardbeg lovers. I like it, but kind of like the way I like uh, a, a Lefroy 10. Alrighty, so uh, my latest finds, I think that covered everything from Ardbeg, except for I just got, this is the Ardbeg Black. Just got two of these. This is the American version at 750 ml, and this is the UK version at 70 cl. And it's kind of funny. Uh, the, if you look at the bottles, to me, they look pretty much the same. So they're a slightly different size, but I don't know if they're, I don't know. Um, but I got one from the UK on auction, and then the other one I just got from a local merchant. If you establish really good relationships with the smaller stores, sometimes they might keep you in mind and hold something for you if they know you're a buyer and you're gonna not just buy the special bottles, but you're gonna buy other things from them as well. Relationships. So one of the things I love about being a whiskey tuber is it's not just about the whiskey, it's about the friendships and relationships. Um, I have traveled around visiting fellow whiskey tubers in Indianapolis, in um, uh, Kansas, in uh, Texas, California, um, England, London, in London, and in Scotland, and at attending events as well as just having meetups with people. Oh, and then here in Northern California, I'm in, I'm, I live near Sacramento. Uh, I used to live, be in the Bay Area, I moved up just before Christmas uh, 2019. It's really about the people. And that for me means helping fellow whiskey tubers, helping other people out. Um, and it, but also means in sharing the whiskeys with friends. I was planning on having an event at my house in April. That has been pushed back due to uh, current circumstances. And then I pushed back to May and now it's just on hold until whenever. So I'm hoping to have an event in my house. I'll have an, uh, an open bar. Um, I have these challenge coins I'm going to have out that I'll, I'll make available. It's the same thing as, it's the same image as my icon on my, on my YouTube channel and my Facebook group and so forth. And, uh, but hopefully it'll be one of the things we'll celebrate is, um, the return to normal, normal. When is life ever normal, right? Alrighty. So I love Ardbeg. I think it's, I like I like the advertisements, the commercials that they move. I think it has a quirky, uh, um, humorous uh, aspect to it. I like the way they do their, their sort of cartoonish storytelling. Storytelling, love that. Eons have passed. Continents have collided. Oceans have drifted on fiery mantles. Giants have come and gone. <laughs> Who knows what lurks beneath the boggy peat of Iowa? The centuries hid their secrets well, until the Department of Art Bogology dug a little deeper into Ardbeg's peaty past. They dug, and they dug. And they dug, but to no avail. Then... <laughs> we all dig a hot bag. Uh, I love the individuality and the variety of Ardbeg. I like Lef Lagavulin, I like Lefroy, but I find a lot more variety in, in Ardbeg. And uh, the, the, the people too. Uh, Ardbeg seems to bring out something different in, in people. 
uh, you know, this, this sort of that weird art big nerdiness or cult cultishness. But anyway, alrighty. So I hope you're all doing well. Uh, if you have some, there are other art bags I would like to get my hands on. Eventually I will. Some of those older bottles and now getting more expensive bottles. Looking forward to the art bag five. We beastie coming out. Um, uh, definitely want to get my hands on one of those. So anyway, um, all right. So I hope you enjoy this video and, uh, everybody take care until next time. Cheers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.